This video is brought to you by Sayerite. Visit Sayerite.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. Protect your sails and free up some room in the sail locker by storing your head sail on the deck in a four-deck bag. To use it for your hanked sail, simply douse the sail leaving the hanks or jib snaps on the forestay. Then stuff the sail into the four-deck bag and zip the front edge closed over top of the forestay wire. Attach the halyard to the back edge via the webbing loop and lift the foredeck bag off the deck. Now your sail is stored and protected from the UV. The foredeck sail bag kit is available in a variety of colors made from Sunbrella marine grade fabric and it's also available in a variety of sizes to fit your configuration. Order yours today from Sailrite. Order a kit from Sailrite and we'll show you exactly how to build it in this video. Let's get started. The pattern has been plotted on this umbrella marine grade fabric. First, we need to cut it out. The fabric will come pre-plotted with chalk lines drawn on the fabric. Those chalk lines may not go all the way to the edge of the fabric, so when you're cutting, extend the lines all the way to the edge of the fabric. We recommend using a hot knife which helps to seal the edges of the fabric to keep them from unraveling. Here we're using the Sayerite Edge Hot Knife Package. The circle pattern is the bottom of the bag, and the body of the bag is a rectangle with a triangle cut out of it. The kit comes with Dacron. It's used in areas that are prone to chafe. The first piece of Dacron for chafe protection is at the top of the bag where the four-stay wire comes through. Included in the kit is a 4-inch Dacron strip of fabric. We will cut two 4-inch by 4-inch squares out of this. To mark the 4-inch squares, we're using the clear acrylic ruler that's available from Sailrite. No need to use a hot knife on the Dacron fabric. Its edges do not typically unravel. Now use the basting tape that's included in the kit and adhere it to three sides of the square, only on one side of each of the squares. We find that it's easier to break the seamstick basting tape rather than cut it. By breaking it with your fingers, as Bill shows here, it's easier to peel off the transfer paper when it becomes time to reveal the glue. Now follow that same procedure for the second square. We will be basting these squares to the sunbrella. Bill finds the center of the square where the basting tape was not applied and marks it. A square will be placed on both sides of the sunbrella fabric at the point of the triangle. Arrange the square so just a bit of the white hangs over this umbrella edge. The transfer paper has been removed from the double-sided tape and we baste it in place at this location. Then we will flip the cover or the main body and we will apply the second patch directly over the first patch that's on the opposite side. We'll now take this over to the sewing machine and we scroll up one side so we can fit it underneath the arm of the sewing machine. We're using the Sayrite Ultrafeed LSZ1 sewing machine and we've set it in a zigzag stitch about 4 millimeters in length, 5 millimeters in width. And we did some reversing at the beginning to lock our stitch in place and we sew down the three sides that are on the Sunbrella fabric, in other words the three sides that has the double sided tape on them. Instead of turning at the corners, what we do is we do reversing at the corners. That way we can sew all of the legs. Then we can flip the panel and sew the remainder stitch along the bottom edge of our square. So now we'll rotate the fabric assembly so we can sew down the bottom edge. We'll do some reversing at the beginning and the end of this run of stitches as well. Now if you don't have a zigzag sewing machine that's quite all right. You can still sew a straight stitch about six millimeters in length and follow the same procedure. Trace a three inch line from the point of the triangle to the opposite seam. Sew a row of stitches on either side of this marked line making sure not to sew over the line. The line will eventually be our cut line, where the forestay will come through the foredeck bag. Do some reversing at the beginning and the end as shown here. 
this should be repeated on the other side of the line in the same manner. We will not show that. Then sew a row of stitches along the remaining edge following the shape of this umbrella and reversing at the beginning and the end to lock the stitches in place. Before we reach the line, we'll do some reversing there because we're going to cut along that line, which would basically slit our stitches. Then we'll lift the presser foot and reposition the fabric underneath the presser foot and we will sew directly on top of that stitch that's beside the line that we made, doing some reversing there, and we'll sew to the opposite corner uh, along the edge of this umbrella, which you can see through the Dacron, and we'll do some reversing there. Along the edge of this umbrella, trim off the excess Dacron. Then cut along the traced line, being sure not to cut any of your stitches, and stop short of the edge of the square patch. This reinforcement patch is where the stay will rest on the foredeck bag. Next, we'll cut a Dacron piece to reinforce the bottom of the bag, where the forestay comes through and the sheets. Now, from the 3 inch wide Dacron, cut two seven and a half inch long strips. You'll find the clear acrylic ruler is very helpful when patterning and working with canvas and upholstery. Again, the edges of Dacron typically do not unravel, so scissors can be used to cut this. No need to use a hot knife. Take the strip and fold it in half lengthwise. Do the same with the opposite piece. We're using the Sayrac canvas patterning ruler to crease it well. On the inside of the folded Dacron strips, we'll place double-sided tape along both long edges. This is on the inside so that we can sandwich this umbrella material between the Dacron strip. We'll do that on both pieces. Mm -hmm. Peel off the transfer paper revealing the glue and then place this strip on one end of the angular corners of the fabric so the fabric is in the fold of the Dacron and the tape hangs a bit off the end. The kit available from Sarac comes with all the materials. We'll have a tools list at the end of this video to help you pick the tools that you may need. Now our Dacron strip or tape encapsulates the sunbrella or sandwiches the sunbrella fabric on this edge. We'll do the same thing on the opposite end. Sew a row of straight stitches or zigzag stitches down the raw side approximately an eighth inch from the edge of the Dacron. Be sure to do reversing at the beginning and the end to lock your stitch in place. We will then repeat this row of stitches down the opposite edge, the folded edge, about an eighth inch from the fold to secure this Dacron tape in place. We will do the same thing with the opposite piece. We will not show that. In other words, the piece on the opposite side. Trim off any excess Dacron so it's flush with the umbrella fabric underneath. You can see through the Dacron to see where this umbrella rests. Next, we'll attach the Sarite logo. We will adhere this logo to the outside of the bag as shown here in the video. Once this logo is attached, this will officially be the outside of the Fordeck bag. This logo has good adhesive on it, but typically no glue sticks well to Sumbrella marine grade fabric. So unfortunately, we have to take it to the sewing machine and sew around the perimeter. We're doing this with a straight stitch. A zigzag can also be used. Sewing around the perimeter of a logo like this usually means that there'll be a lot of bulk fabric that has to be pushed underneath the throat of the sewing machine. When it comes time to push the excess fabric through the throat of the sewing machine, it's always a good idea to bury the needle so you don't lose your position. Then make adjustments to the fabric, uh, as Bill is doing here, pushing the excess through. He will continue to sew very slowly around the perimeter of the logo until he reaches his beginning point and then he'll do some reversing. We will not show all of this. The Sarite logo shows the world that you did it yourself. A number 10 Vizlon finished zipper closes up the front of our bag. We'll be installing that next. 
at the center slit on the Dacron, measure over one inch from the slit and mark the Dacron. Now find the number 10 YKK finished zipper. The written instructions say to separate the two halves of the zipper and we will place the starter end, the end with the starter box, on the mark we made on the Dacron. On the opposite end, we will mark the flange of the zipper right where the cover stops. So the zipper is right up against the raw edge of the fabric. Now the written instructions say to uh, secure both halves of the zipper together and mark the opposite side. At those marks, we will cut off the excess zipper with a pair of scissors. It's always a good idea to use a hot knife or a soldering gun or wood burning tool to seal the ends and prevent them from fraying. We need to create a zipper stop. To do this, we're going to use some of the scraps umbrella. We're going to cut a two inch by two inch piece of fabric out, in other words, a square. This is a two inch by four inch, and we'll just put a line in the center. We will take these squares and we will cut them out with a hot knife to keep, keep the edges from unraveling, and we will fold them over the ends of the zipper. We will fold the square one direction, and then we will fold the square the opposite direction. We will not be using basting tape, but that could be used to help hold it on the end of the zipper that you just cut off. Here's how we'd like to position it. So the raw edge is flush with the raw edge that we just cut off and used a hot knife on. Now we'll take it to the sewing machine and sew a straight stitch onto the flange of the zipper and through this umbrella fabric, creating a gorgeous stop where the slider will not come off. Be sure the slider is on the half of the zipper with the starter box. If it's not, you'll have to take this off and redo it. One inch from the slit, we place a mark there if it has not been done already. The starter post and the starter box will be started on that one inch mark. We will place double-sided tape along the flange of the zipper, keeping it as far away from the zipper's teeth as possible. Be sure to place it on the correct side of the zipper's flange. You want the teeth to be facing in towards the body of the Fordeck bag. We use the Sayrac canvas patterning ruler to be assured that the basting tape is stuck well to the flange of the zipper. Remove the transfer paper and baste the zipper in place. Notice that the zipper's teeth are pointed in towards the body of the Fordeck bag. Align the edge of the flange with the edge of the umbrella fabric and baste it in place, being careful not to pull or stretch the zipper as you baste. And if you've done it appropriately, the end of the zipper, where the starter post is, should be about one inch from the slit in the center position of the bag. It is wise to baste only one half of the zipper and then sew it in place and then work on the second zipper on the other side. We are sewing a straight stitch into the flange of the zipper, doing some reversing at the beginning. Notice the presser foot is right up against the zipper's teeth, so it's riding right along the zipper's teeth, and that stitch is approximately an eighth inch or so away from the teeth. We do not want the stitch too close to the teeth. When we get to the stop that we applied, we just sew through it and do a little bit of reversing, and that zipper is secured. Now we still need to create a fold in that zipper, but we'll do that after we sew the second portion of the zipper on, the one with the starter box and the slider. Bill positions the zipper so he knows what side the basting tape needs to go on, flips the zipper, and then he will apply the basting tape along the flange of the zipper, just like he did for the first portion of the zipper. And then he'll baste it to the cover right along that edge, just like we did again with the zipper that had the starter post. We'll then take this to the sewing machine and sew it in place. We will start sewing at the stop here because we want the bulk of the fabric outside the throat of the sewing machine. We did some reversing there and we will sew along this edge. When we reach the, the slider, what we do is we bury the needle, lift the foot, 
and then we pull on the slider. You have to pull on the tabs because it's a locking slider and move it out of the way, lower the foot, and then continue to sew. Now we can take this over to the table and we will fold the cover back so we can see the inside edge of where the zippers were sewn down and we will apply basting tape to the sunbrella. This basting tape or seam stick for canvas is applied very close to the raw edge of the sunbrella fabric and what it'll do is it'll help to hold a single hem and the fold of the single hem will help bury the teeth of the zipper to protect it from the UV. Utilizing the Sayrite canvas patterning ruler we will adhere the basting tape well to the umbrella so it sticks well. Most glues don't stick well to umbrella fabric that's why they're water and stain resistant or that's why the umbrella is water and stain resistant. Now we will peel off the transfer paper revealing the glue and we will fold the umbrella back so that the fold is basically right at the end of the zipper's teeth. The umbrella fabric if exposed to the sun would outlast the life of the teeth if they were exposed to the sun. So this helps prolong the life of the zipper. At that slit we made at the center, there's a lot of bulk fabric with two layers of Dacron and this umbrella, but it still will create a fold there. We will do this exact same procedure to the opposite zipper. The opposite half, I should say. Now we'll take it to the sewing machine and we will basically sew almost directly on top of that first stitch. The first stitch is no longer visible on the outside of the cover. This stitch that you're applying now that helps to hold that hem in place will be visible on the outside of the cover. So keep it nice and straight. This time we're sewing with the teeth up against the left side of the presser foot. When we reach the center slit, there's where there's a lot of bulk with that Dacron. We sew all the way through the zipper and secure the Dacron down as well, doing some reversing there. Repeat that exact same procedure with the opposite half of the zipper. But that zipper has the slider on it, so when we approach the slider, we will have to stop sewing, bury our needle, lift our presser foot, and then pull the slider past the presser foot. Remember, it's a locking slider, so you do have to pull on the tab, otherwise it won't move. Bill forgets that here. Pulls on the tab and it moves out of the way, and now he will lower his foot and continue to sew. To the bottom of the bag, the round circular portion, we're going to add a reinforcing strip and then a webbing loop. The halyard will attach to this webbing loop to hold the rear end of the foredeck bag up. Mark the diameter of the circle by folding the piece in half. Crease the fabric slightly as it lays flat on the table. Then use your soap stone pencil or the chalk marking pencil and mark where the crease is on the top edge and the bottom edge. Open up the circle and strike a line from mark to mark. This is the diameter of the circle. Now find the Dacron tape that's three inches wide. We will cut it to the approximate size, making sure that it's slightly oversized. In other words, longer than the diameter of the circle. Apply basting tape to both long edges of the three inch wide Dacron piece. Peel off the transfer paper and baste the three inch wide Dacron strip across the circle so it's centered on the diameter line that we just struck down. Now it's ready for sewing. Sew one row of a straight stitch approximately an eighth inch from the raw edge of the Dacron. Be sure to do some reversing at the beginning and the end. Then repeat that process for the other side of the three inch Dacron strip. We will not show that. Trim the ends of the Dacron to match the curvature of the circle. Cut a 12 inch length of 1 inch wide tubular polyester webbing. It is best to use a hot knife to prevent the webbing ends from unraveling. If you don't have that, use a wood burning tool or a soldering gun. Fold the webbing in half widthwise to create a loop. We like to apply the seam stick to the loop 
being sure that we don't go too far into the looped portion of the webbing. This helps to hold the webbing in place as we take it to the sewing machine and sew. The loop should protrude beyond the circle by approximately two inches, so Bill marks two inches from the end of the loop. Note that the webbing is not sandwiching the circle. Both layers of the webbing loop are on top of the Dacron strip. Base the webbing loop in place at that location. Notice there's at least two inches of the loop hanging over the edge of the circle. Now we'll take it to the sewing machine and we will sew a box X stitch starting at least a half inch from the edge of the circle. A box X stitch is nothing more than a box, whether it be a square or a rectangle, with an X in the center. When we reach the corner of the box, what we do is we bury our needle, usually by rotating the balance wheel by hand, lift our presser foot, rotate the fabric assembly, lower our presser foot, and then sew to the next corner. Bill does some reversing here. Buries his needle, lifts the foot, rotates the assembly, lowers the foot, and then sews up to the last corner. Now he'll bury his needle yet again, and he will then create the first of the diagonals for the box X stitch, or the X portion of the box X stitch. Buries his needle. He will sew down that same leg he sewed, reaching the other corner, burying his needle, lifting his foot, rotating the assembly, and then sewing the last diagonal of the box X stitch. And as you should always do at the beginning and the end of your sewing, do some reversing. Everything that we need to sew onto our panels is now complete. We're ready to assemble the bag. Fold the body of the bag in half so outside surfaces are facing each other. We'll actually mark the fabric outside and inside at this point at this corner. This is the inside, it's facing up and the outside surfaces are facing each other. Now, with those edges lined up with each other, we will crease the fabric slightly at the forward or top edge, I should say, and we will strike a line there with our soapstone pencil or chalk pencil as we're using here on both the outside and inside surface. Then we'll open up our panel. This is the center on the opposite side of the zipper. Grab the circular bottom and place it over top of that line so that the Dacron is facing up. Fold the webbing loop under as shown. Match up the webbing loop with the center mark from the previous step. So the main body panel's outside surface is up and the circular outside surface of it is facing down. In other words, outside surfaces are facing each other. Now we'll take the circle and the main body panel to the sewing machine and we will start sewing on top of that webbing a half inch from the raw edge of the circular panel. Do some excess reversing here to lock the stitch in place and to also secure the webbing well to the cover at this location. And we will continue to sew around the perimeter uh, lining up the circle with the raw edge of the body. The body is being fed in straight and the circle is being pulled over to the right as we're sewing, trying to keep that stitch approximately a half inch from the raw edges of those assemblies that we are lining up. Now when we reach the Dacron here, what we want to do is we want to sew into it by about an eighth inch and do some reversing. We will stop sewing here. We do not want to sew all around the perimeter in one direction. So now what we'll do is we'll go back to where the webbing loop is formed and we will start sewing in the opposite direction. So now the circle is going to be on the bottom side of our assembly and the main body panel is on the top side. And so we will line up the edges as we sew, keeping the stitch a half inch from the raw edge of the fabric assembly. We did some reversing on top of that webbing yet again, securing it well. 
If you don't have a heavy-duty sewing machine like the Serite Ultrafeed uh, sewing machine, sewing through that webbing, which is basically folded back, is four layers of tubular webbing and some 8-ounce Dacron, I believe, and two layers of Sumbrella. It's quite a chunk of fabric that you're sewing through, so a home sewing machine may struggle with that. Now, at the bottom, the side that doesn't have the webbing loop, when you reach that Dacron piece, we will stop sewing there, sewing into it about an eighth inch or so. Bill's going to mark it with a chalk pencil here, just so he knows where to stop. Since we stopped our sewing right at the Dacron tape, the Dacron tape is three inches. Half of the Dacron tape would be one and a half inches. Mm -hmm. So we know exactly how much excess fabric we need to complete the circle, one and a half inches. But we need to add a half inch for seam allowance, so that means two inches. So we mark from our stitch two inches in. Now working from the opposite side, which is not sewn together, we will mark from our stitch two inches there as well. This is the amount of fabric that we want to cut away from the bottom portion of our bag, the portion that we're going to be sewing together. We want to extend a line from those marks with the fabric laying flat on the table. We're marking on the inside of the fabric. Actually, the bag is turned wrong side out to about the midway position of the bag. So Bill's actually going to measure it. For him, it is about 20-some inches, and he'll mark there. That's the, about the midway of this bottom edge. Then he's going to use his straight edge from the mark he just made, uh, which was 2 inches from our stitch line, to the midway position. He's going to use the chalk pencil to mark this line. A soapstone pencil also works great with Sumbrella fabric. Now he'll repeat that process by flipping the panel, but before he flips the panel he's going to transfer the midway position with a mark. Then he flips the panel and he will create a wedge here as well, laying the fabric nice and flat. Now we can take this and put a ruler underneath it and use the Serite Edge hot knife to cut the fabric to size, cut this wedge off. This is excess fabric. We will cut one side at a time. Now seam stick for canvas can be applied. We want to start sewing three inches from the zipper. So this is the edge of the fabric. We mark it three inches and we apply double-sided tape to the bottom edge. This is the outside surface that we're applying the double-sided tape to, not the inside surface. The three inches left unsewn will allow for the sheets to exit the bag. Again, because seam stick doesn't adhere exceptionally well to acrylic fabric like Sumbrella, we use the Serac Canvas Patterning Ruler. If you don't have that, you can just use another smooth, heavy object. Peel off the transfer paper, and now we will baste uh, the panels together so outside surfaces are facing each other. Baste it so that the zippers are flush, the ends of the zippers are flush with each other, and then baste all the way to the circular end piece. When you finally reach the circular piece, there is a little bit of shape here and transition. So you'll have to be diligent to base the pieces together uh, because you're going to have to be working against some of the transitional changes there. We'll be sewing this bottom edge closed, but we want to leave unsewn about three inches after the zipper. So Bill marks about three inches from the zipper's position on the Dacron tape. He'll use the deluxe five and a half inch magnetic guide here to keep the stitch a half inch from the raw edge of the fabric assembly. He starts sewing about three inches away from the zipper into the Dacron and he'll do a few forward and reverse stitches here to lock the stitch well in place. This stitch is used to secure the bottom of the bag so make sure you do at least an inch of forward and reverse stitching there. And then we'll sew all the way to the end with the circular body, keeping the stitch a half inch from the raw edge of the fabric as we sew. When we reach the opposite end, we will do some reversing there. That completes that stitch. Now all we have to do is close up the circle, the remaining portion 
that was not closed up at the bottom of the circle, the opposite end of where the webbing loop was placed. So outside surfaces are facing each other. We lay the seam so that it lays flat and we finish up the circle here. We'll do some reversing here when we start sewing. and We'll sew over that half inch tail and into the uh, stitches that are on the opposite side and we'll do some reversing there. We may want to reverse a little bit more than just a few times here. No one is going to see these stitches. They are on the inside of the bag so it doesn't really matter how many stitches you do here and it doesn't really matter what it looks like. Nobody sees these stitches. He's going to sew back all the way from where he started, just a little bit on the inside of those first stitches, just to secure it well. And that is it. We are done sewing this Sayerite Fordek bag kit. Now we just simply turn the cover right side out. And your Fordek bag kit is now complete. And now that your Fordeck bag is done, we just need to load the sail in the Fordeck bag. We're going to show you how we do that next. We will leave the sail's hanks or jib snaps attached to the forestay. Then we will douse the sail. We'll disconnect the halyard and temporarily attach the halyard to the pulpit. Starting from the leech edge, we will begin to stuff the sail into the Fordeck bag. If you'd like, you can push the clue corner with the sheets attached into the bag first. Or you can leave the clue corner out while you're stuffing the main portion of the sail into the bag. Then finally, once it's stuffed in, then you can push the clue corner in towards the bottom of the bag and have the sheets exit out the bottom. In any case, whether you put the clue corner in first or last, the sheets will always exit out the bottom of the bag towards the front. Once a portion of the sail is stuffed in the bag, it's a good idea to start the zipper and zip it down a few inches. Then continue stuffing. By attaching the zipper to the forestay, this helps you to keep the bag in position as you continue to stuff the sail in. At the bottom, at the tack, we will disconnect the sail and stuff it into the bag as well to help protect the tack corner from the damaging UV rays. Now that the sail is in the bag, we can continue to zip the zipper down, but we need to make sure the sheets come through right at our shafe protection, where the Dacron pieces have been attached at the bottom of the forestay bag. Once the zipper is zipped, we take the halyard attached to the uh, pulpit and attach it to the webbing loop, and then we raise the halyard slightly until the bag's off the deck. Now that we showed loading, let's show how easy it is to remove the sail from the foredeck bag. Remove the halyard from the webbing loop, then unzip the forward edge of the bag about halfway. If possible, try to find the tack and attach it. Then attach the halyard to the head. As the halyard line is lifted up, the Fordak bag can be pulled off of the sail. That's all there is to it. Coming up next is the materials list and the tools that we used to make this Sayerite Fordak bag kit. As you can see, all of the materials that are needed come with the kit. The tools do not. You may already have some of these tools on hand. For more free videos like this, be sure to subscribe to the Sayerite YouTube channel and click the bell to be notified of new videos when they become available. Here are potentially other videos that may be of interest to you. It's your loyal patronage to Sayerite that makes these free videos available. Thanks for your loyal support.